Good morning and welcome to Trinity Church gathered again online on this fourth Sunday of the Easter season. Catherine and I are gathered in our home in downtown Columbus, sending forth this service of morning prayer to all on Facebook Live. And we, we welcome you as we gather in the name of our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we welcome as our guest preacher, a dear friend from this congregation, who with his wife have moved to New Haven, Connecticut, where he is studying for uh, the priesthood, studying for the Master of Divinity at Yale University Divinity School. Jake Cunliffe is our preacher today, and we welcome Jake warmly. The service is found on the Facebook Live feed. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Christ has entered, not into a sanctuary made with hands, a copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father. And, and to, to the, the Son. Son and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. We will say the Pascha Nostrum found on the Facebook feed. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia, Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our psalm is Psalm 23. We will read this psalm in unison today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Those who had been baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. 
all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together a song of Christ the servant. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak in the name of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Amen. When my classmates and I were told in March we would not be returning to in-person classes, but participating in remaining lectures over the internet, I felt flummoxed. In other words, I was unsure of what to do with myself. I would miss seeing friends, worshiping together, singing in the choir, of course, but I hadn't expected to be as affected as I was by the announcement that grades were now unnecessary. I could complete my classes and pass them without worrying about aiming for a particular letter grade. And this affected my motivation more than I had expected. Even those who knew me well may not know about my competitive streak. <laughs> I tried to hide it well, but it usually appears when playing games or arguing about some obscure historical fact. And in learning environments, it manifests in a determination to get the best score I can on a test or a paper. Now, I have to say, competitiveness does not always go along with achievement. 
but my grades from last term were good and I had looked forward to maintaining them. I almost needed them to assure myself of my worth and my right to be a seminary student. My sense of belonging within my program was wrapped up in my ability to exceed a benchmark of my own invention. The term gatekeeping is used to explain how different institutions, government agencies, churches, and such like determine who is in and who is out. Universities are gatekeepers in that they decide who gets to benefit from their education, which will help those admitted get a job or meet well-connected people who will help them in their future career. Landlords gatekeep by selecting which potential renter is permitted to live in their property. Employers, social workers, and many other people gatekeep as part of what they do. Gatekeepers not only get to make these consequential decisions on a case-by-case -case basis, they can also create the criteria for what kind of person will be accepted and who merits the opportunity. Once these criteria a list of checkboxes against which each candidate is measured are in place, gatekeeping becomes systematized and consistent within that particular institution. Rather than assessing every individual on their own merit, educators can say, if you don't have this grade average, you don't get to go to college. If you don't conform to our company values, you won't be our employee. If you have a criminal record, you will not get the job. Now, criteria for deciding who is suitable for a certain task or opportunity are often necessary. But it's possible to see how systems can perpetually exclude some people or even entire communities on the basis of such gatekeeping. This kind of systemic exclusion makes my grade anxiety seem trivial though I will tell you it's a very real consequence of living in uncertain times. Gatekeepers then have a weighty responsibility to be fair, objective, and to lead with compassion. Jesus said, I am the gate for the sheep. Jesus' criteria are universal. All of the sheep are called by name. If Jesus is the gate, who is the gatekeeper? Might that be us, the members of Jesus Church? The sheepfold is Trinity on Capitol Square, or today, Trinity on www.zoom.us. It is intended to be a safe, secure place. The Zoom room and Facebook Live are curated by Stacy and Kevin and Reverend Burnett. We can use the settings menu to try and provide the most optimal viewing and listening experience. We are charged not just as Trinity, but as the whole Episcopal Church with gatekeeping in a manner that provides security, yet invites people in and is inclusive. Security is important because we cannot pretend that thieves and bandits do not exist. From Emmanuel AME in Charleston to Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, houses of worship are targeted by people full of hate. Moreover, the thieves and bandits in the gospel are not always physically violent enemies, but the embodiment of whatever takes us away from our desire to have a relationship with God. Whatever pervades or removes the good we see. In other words, sin. So we need security. Yet we also have the responsibility of gatekeeping people who want and need to access God including ourselves. We can't deny people access to God because Jesus is going out among the people and calling all of them by name so that they may have abundant life. The way through the gate is salvation. And while the church cannot deny salvation to anyone because all are called and loved by God, we can be an obstacle that prevents people from continuing or beginning their relationship with God. 
The paradox of how to provide security while keeping the gate open has been an issue for the church since the disciples locked themselves in the upper room following Jesus' resurrection, terrified of who might try to get in, even of Jesus himself. This paradox remained through the Roman persecutions. And it is real today when we hear about those who access Zoom meetings to flood them with explicit material. But we are not called to remain safe in the sheepfold. Jesus' gatekeeping criteria for us are demanding and consequential. To be called is not just to be brought into the sheepfold, but also to be invited to go back through the gate and into the world. In the parable, Jesus leads the sheep out to green pastures to seek the abundance in God that cannot be stored up in one place. We ought to gather others into this abundance too. We are led into the world to do God's work, but also led to our own salvation in a more perfect realm. I believe that whatever we do as the church is imperfect. Reading the text closely, it seems God is implied to be the gatekeeper in this parable, but God does not gatekeep as people do. God delegates work to the church, and as willing disciples, we must do our best to gather and send people. But we must do our work knowing only Jesus can fully resolve the paradox of security and inclusion. Only Jesus can be perfectly hospitable while in the same moment laying down his life for the sheep. Nonetheless, God has charged us co to continue the redeeming work of the gospel. And the Episcopal Church has a great deal of resources, committees, and trainings that can be used to ensure we welcome people into God's sheepfold, whether online, as today, or, God willing, at some not too distant time in the future, when hundreds of us can pack into Trinity on Capitol Square, as we have on Easter Day for 150 years. Amen. We indeed look forward to that joyful day when we gather together in the church. We give thanks for the efforts to show Christ in the world around us and beyond us. The traditions of the church go back into the earliest centuries when this creed, the Apostles' Creed, was, was crafted. It is meant to be a kind of gatekeeping that does not exclude, but rather invites and enriches and propels an alive church to proclaim the risen Christ in the world. So now as you are moved, either remaining seated as Catherine and I are, or to stand, let us confess our faith in this ancient creed. I believe in God. The Father oh, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, the Collect for the Fourth Sunday of Easter. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A collect for Sundays. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A colleague for peace. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we truly, surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. A colic for guidance. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our prayers and supplications, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in all their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings at this time. We know that there are special prayers that have been sent to us uh, via the Facebook feed. We want to um, acknowledge the request for prayers remembering Mark Cheek's uh, uncle, Burl McAdams, who died this past week, and also uh, the people of Puerto Rico who have suffered yet again a, a natural disaster in a terrible earthquake recently. Stacy Kaiser, are there, are there other requests for prayers today? For in the garden ministry, um, for Lori and all those who are serving, continue to serve there and um, for the people that join us every week. Are there other prayers? this day.
We pray for Jake and Jenna in New Haven and for Jake's uh, schoolmates at Yale Divinity School, for the faculty and the staff and uh, those who serve in that community and the custodial staff and the, and the uh, other areas that deal with material service in the university. We're mindful of the suffering that goes on in ways that are both seen and unseen. We're mindful of people who have uh, contracted uh, the coronavirus and uh, are not aware of it, uh, asking that we continue to be ever vigilant. And as our Bishop Tom Bridenthal has called us to do, to, to go the extra mile in seeking the welfare of our neighbor, as well as uh, protecting ourselves. As we gather together as a, a people of prayer this day, we are mindful of, of all the needs that we have and our desires and petitions as we put forth to Christ. We ask that his peace might reign in our hearts this day and always. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. If we were in Trinity Church, and I agree with the preacher, I look forward to that glorious day when we'll all be together, um, doubtless uh, honoring social distancing, respectful, and perhaps in, in um, uh, face, uh, face masks and, uh, and other protective uh, gear, but, but together uh, at some point, we do not know when, we are also uh, being very careful to not rush that time and to be appropriately protective uh, for our for the well-being of our neighbors as well as ourselves. I, um, I know Kevin's going to tell us a little bit about, about um, the plan for, um, uh, for, for the upcoming liturgies and also a special project that's going on uh, in our life together that Stacy and he have put together as a marvelous opportunity for midweek study and fellowship and, and really worship. So, um, Kevin, without further, further, well, actually, I'm not doing that. I'm just going to introduce Jake first. Uh, Jake, um, we're so glad to see you again. Um, the last time I saw you and Jenna, we were enjoying an Italian meal and had no idea that we'd be doing something like this. But um, this is going to be a remarkable first year of divinity study for you. And um, you'll always remember it. And we always remember you with thanksgiving to God for our connection. Jake, how are you doing and how's Jenna? You're muted. We're doing well, thank you. Um, yeah, one of the silver linings, I suppose, of the um, COVID stay at home is that um, we can be in, be virtually in places we might not have been in. Uh, so it's really good to be with, um, with you, Reverend Burnett and Catherine and, and everyone at Trinity. Uh, we miss Trinity. We send our love and our best wishes. I um, uh, wish we could see you all more frequently. Um, but um, it, it's been a, it has been a, a strange time. Uh, a lot of people were on spring break when it was announced that we would not be coming back in person. I was in New Haven, so I was nearby the whole time. But um, people have been uh, left wherever home is for them with a lot of their stuff in New Haven and unable to come back to it. Um, so it's, it's been a strange time. It, I, I think that the hardest thing has been for those who are graduating. Uh, the Yale Divinity School is a very uh, kind of constant place in that you see people every day. There's a lot of community, um, a lot of things happening through worship and other things. And um, uh, for those who are graduating this year, they would have expected to have a really good final couple of months where they're not only working, but seeing a, a lot of people have been friends throughout their two or three years. And uh, for them to now have to go through the ceremony of receiving their diploma virtually and so on, that was uh, uh, quite a disappointment, I think. So um, uh, I, I'm keeping them, especially in my prayers and thoughts among this community. Um, and on a personal note, I will be beginning my uh, chaplaincy internship um, in a couple of weeks time, uh, possibly that soon. Um, so um, I do, I uh, yeah, do ask for Trinity's prayers and um, continuing good wishes. Thank you, Jake. Now, Kevin, I, 
I know you have some good good news for us and important news for us. Yes. Um, before that, I would say that we we did neglect to offer up in prayer all the all the college graduates, especially those from Ohio State that are receiving their degrees today, and. Uh, my my school Denison will be receiving theirs on the 16th so mm -hmm. they still have a couple weeks they're just going into finals so for the seniors that are graduating there we have keep them in our thoughts as well and all the high schools and universities around uh, so two big announcements uh, next Sunday the bishop has allowed that a small contingent from the congregation five people um, will be allowed back into the church. So we will be broadcasting our Facebook live feed from the nave of Trinity Church. We will have some live music. So I'll be playing the piano. Uh, and Patricia Regola, who is a licensed uh, lay preacher in the diocese, will be preaching on Sunday, that's May 10th, um, at 10 a.m. Um, so we will be back in the church, which is exciting. We hope to get the congregation back there as soon as possible. I think that's more up to the governor than it is the bishop, but we, it's a little bit of both at this point. Um, let's see. Then on Wednesday of this week, uh, Wednesday, May 6th, Carl Peterson, who is the principal violist with the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, will be leading our arts and, and spirituality conversation. Um, that takes place at 1130 on Wednesday morning. And it's a Zoom meeting, not a Facebook Live, but a Zoom meeting. Um, so if you would check out the website, trinitycolumbus.org, and look for connections, there is a, a link to the arts and spirituality meeting, and it will give you the Zoom information. Also, this upcoming week's um, eChimes will also have that, that link in it so that you can get directly to um, get into that meeting. Um, it'll be interesting to hear what Carl has to say about Bach and God. So, thank you. Thank you. We're talking about universities and graduations. Um, I'm mindful that tomorrow marks the 50th anniversary of the of the tragic shootings of four uh, students at Kent State University in in the spring of 1970. Um, Many programs have been planned around this. I was planning on going to a program at Bexley Public Library, a talk, um, but uh, many things are online. And I just call the Community of Christ at Trinity Episcopal Church to take a moment today and a moment tomorrow uh, to pray to God for, for a deeper peace. I'm mindful that as we move into our um, continued uh, offerings of program and prayer, uh, and service in the community. Uh, it requires our continued support financially and prayerfully of this ministry and this mission. So I invite you to give generously to the work of Trinity Church to uh, fulfill your pledge payments uh, promptly and to also um, dig deep for other ways that you can assist those who are in, in a great need and sometimes very silent need in our community. I'm also mindful that when I offered the peace, I did not extend the peace physically to a person who's been at my side every day for the last seven and a half weeks. And uh, it's been our custom to offer a gentle uh, kiss at the peace. So uh, if we can have a second peace, we always need God's peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> peace. This is a prayer that's, uh, been crafted for our time separated from the, from the altar. And it's become a, a deep prayer of, of reflection for, for us in this household. Let us pray together. A collect for our time. Lord of the feast, we thank, thank you, you for, for gathering us you. as your people. We call to remembrance the many times we have been fed at your table and we, we lament our, our distance, distance now. Be, be present, present, Lord Jesus, as you, you were present with your disciples. Be, be known to us in the breaking of the bread, and may your, your Holy, Holy Spirit sustain us and all your church until we gather together again. We ask this for the sake of your love. 
。アーメン And this prayer in the time of coronavirus comes to us from Fordham University and its president, Father Joseph McShane. O、oh、God of all mercies, grant to, your family, to our families and communities safety and good health. To those afflicted with COVID 19, swift healing. To health care providers, strength and stamina. To our leaders, wisdom and compassion. To our nation, unity and purpose. To the dying, comfort. To the dead, eternal life. To all believers, strong faith in you. To the church, The gift of service to the whole human family, unity of heart, and to us, your servants, the reward of knowing that we are doing your will when we spend ourselves in loving service of others. May the God of all consolation walk with us through these difficult times. And may God find us worthy of the call to be a healing and reconciling presence in a wounded world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together a prayer attributed to St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have you given, given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.